In this video, you will learn how to find predictive power of independent variable with respect to target variable using chi-square test in Python. When you have both your independent and dependent variable as categories, you can use chi-square test to find significant features for your model. Let's import pandas as pd. We will also import chi-square from this sklearn from sklearn.feature selection. Import chi-square to so this will be used to calculate the chi-square test. Now I'm going to read a CSV file and save in a variable df. I will call pd.read underscore CSV. And inside this, I will pass my CSV file name, which is data.csv. If you get something like this, this is just a warning. If you run this code again, you this warning will go. Now we don't see any warning here. Let us look at the top five rows of a data frame. I will write df.head. And here in the output, you can see we have this data frame here and we have all this continuous, all this categorical variable. So we have this Amazoning street, lot shape, land counter and utilities. All these are continuous columns. And here utilities is a target variable while rest of these columns are our independent variables. So we are going to find the relationship of this variable with respect to our target variable utilities using chi-square test. And in chi-square, we check the p-values and we see that if the p-value is less than 0.05, we say that the variable is significant and can be used for the model development and is highly predictive in nature. Let us check the data type of our variable. I will write df.dtypes. And here in the output, you will see all these variables are objects. So we can perform this chi-square test. And let us also check if there are any missing values in a data frame because if there are any missing values, then we won't be able to perform. We need to first drop those missing values or impute them. So let us check df dot is na dot sum. And this will give us the missing count column wise. So here in the output, you see there are no missing values. We are getting zero, zero for each and every variable. So we can go ahead and do the chi-square analysis. One thing you will notice here that we have these values in our data frame and they are all categories, but to perform chi-square test, we need to convert these categories into numbers. So we need to perform some kind of encoding and we are going to use the ordinal encoder to encode these categories. And before that, let us check the unique categories in each and every variable. I will type df.nunique and this will give us the unique values. So in this variable M is zoning, there are five unique categories in street two, lot shape four, land counter four, utilities two. So these are the number of unique values present in this variables. And now we are going to convert these categories into numbers so that we can perform the chi-square test. Without converting this into number, you cannot perform the chi-square test. Now let us do that. For that, we will import the ordinal encoding. I will write from sklearn dot preprocessing import ordinal encoder. Now I'm going to make an object of this ordinal encoder class. I will write E and C and then I will call this ordinal encoder class. Now first I'll print the column names. I will write df dot columns. Now I'm going to fit on this column, this ordinal encoder. I will call this enc dot fit and inside this I will pass data frame and then these column names. So I will copy this from here and paste it here. Let us execute our code. So I have fitted this on this data frame. Now I need to transform it to get the numerical values. So I will copy this code from here this df and the column names. And then I will again copy this whole code, paste it here. And now instead of this fit method, I will call the transform method. And now I will execute the code. 
Now let us print this data frame again df dot head and now here you see in the output that we got the numerical values for this data frame now earlier you will see we had these categorical columns and now let us also check we are getting the same number of unique values so here you will see in MS zoning we had this five unique categories and in three two four four and two now let us check whether we are getting the same number of unique categories or not. So here you will see we are getting the same unique categories 5, 2, 4, 4 and 2. So now our data set is prepared for this chi square testing. So before that I'll split this data frame into X and Y. In X we will have all the independent variables and in Y we will have our target variable which is utilities. I will write here X DF dot ILOC then I want all rows so I will type here colon then I, I want columns from this index number 0 1 2 3 so I will write here from 0 up to 3 and in Y we will have our target variable so I will type here df dot iloc I want all the rows and I just want the last column which is our target variable so I will just write minus one. So whenever you are writing minus one, that means you are getting the last column. Let us execute our code. And if I print x dot head, so you will see we have these three columns, one, two, and three. We have this lot shape. We did not have this column. We don't have this column land counter. To include this column, I will just increase the indexing by four and if I execute this code again so here you will see now in the output we have these four columns here next we will split our data frame into x train x test y train y test for that I will import train test split from sklearn from sklearn dot model selection import train test split and I'm doing this because whenever you are doing this chi square test on your independent variables, you always have to do it on your training data set to avoid overfitting. You don't have to include your test data set here. Otherwise, you will be passing some of the information from the train data set to the, X, uh, to the test data set. That is why we don't do it on the test data set to avoid overfitting. Now, let us make those variable x train x test y train y test and then let's call this train test split and inside this we will pass our x and y and then we will pass the test size uh, which is going to be 0 0.3 and then we will also this is 0 0.3 and we will pass this random state and you can give any number here but if you want to get the same result in, as mine then you have to put this number one two three now let us execute our code now we are going to calculate the chi square so i'll make one variable f score to calculate chi square it first calculates the s score using this uh, formula chi square 2 which we imported so if you remember here we imported this class chi square 2 so we are calling this chi square 2 and we will do this on x train and y train so in x train we have all the independent variables and in y train we have dependent variable so we are going to calculate the predictive power of this independent variable with respect to the variable which is in y now let us execute our code and now if i print this f score here you will see we are getting two arrays in this first array we have the value for the f score and in the second array we have this p value so p value is important for us Using this p value, we will determine which variables are significant. Now, let me make a series of this f score. I'll make a new variable p values and then I will call pd.series and inside this I will pass f score and then indexing I will give it 1. And why I'm typing 1 here is because if I type here f score f underscore of 0. So I'm getting this first array 4.0, 2.0, which is F score, but I want to get the P values. And if I type here one, then I will get the P values. So that is why here I'm taking F score and then one, and then I will reset the index. So I will type here P values 
dot index since we don't uh, we are not getting the columns names here so we want to reset the index and we want to give column names to all this independent variables and that is why we are calling this p values dot index and then i will call x train dot columns now if i type this p values dot index p values so you will see here now we are getting the column names as well so we have this column names for these column names we have these p values and now let us also arrange this in ascending or descending order so i will call p values dot sort underscore values and then i will pass one parameter ascending is equal to false i want to uh, order it in descending order so now first we have this variable street whose p value is 0.99 followed by ms zoning 0.98 0.88 and 0.15 so here you will see the least p value for this variable is lot shape which is 0.15 we we have to select those variable whose p value is less and as a practice we should always select variables whose p value is less than 0.05 but here you will see we have very few variables and their values are not less than 0.05 so in that case you can consider this last variable whose p value is less as compared to the other variables so as i have said you know ideally we should consider feature whose p value is less than 0.5 but here in this data set we don't have any such feature whose p value is less than 0.5 because the data set has all random features so these features are all random and when when you are trying it on your own data set uh, you will find that some of the important features having the p value 0.5 so i would request you to try this on your data set and see if you are getting some of the variables whose p value is less than 0.5 so that's all for this tutorial i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching